Hi there, just been doing a bit of research into milk, cow's milk, um, in particular casein, um, one of the proteins found within the milk and some of the negative health um, effects of the A1 beta casein. Um, now I've been particularly looking at isoschemic heart disease and diabetes, um, but there's some other health effects that have been studied in some research papers um, and this has been some correlation. Now in milk um, one of the main proteins is this casein um, which is about 76 to 86 percent of the milk. Um, the rest of it is in this whey protein which makes up about 20 percent. So this 80 percent is arranged in these uh, in these clumps called these measles um, which is basically these little globules like this um, and they arrange themselves in solution in like a, a colloid which means that they're sort of separated and suspended in solution because the outer shell of this measles is uh, negatively charged. So these little globules they arrange themselves in this fashion because there's a hydrophilic end and there's a hydrophobic tail so they form these clumps like this. Um, now there's basically two strains of this. There's an A1 beta casein and an A2 beta casein. So the A1 is a newer um, protein chain. Um, so basically from what I've read there's been a mutation in some cows during the breeding process that's introduced um, a different protein. Now you can see this is nearly identical except for this. So this, this chain by the way is 209 uh, peptides long, proteins long. And on position 67, you can see there's either a proline, which is this guy, or a histidine in the A1. So this mutation has formed a different uh, protein in this position 67. The rest of it is exactly the same. Um, now, the implications of this is... Um, let's put a picture over here. So... In the original protein um, from the original cows, there's the proline has a very strong affinity to the rest of this chain, so it, it, it has a, a very strong connection here. Um, but in the histidine, it's not so strong, so the attraction is not so strong to the rest of this chain. So during the digestion process, process this BCM7 or the beta castromorphin 7 can easily break off during the digest digestive process and this is an opioid that can be absorbed through the gut and enter the bloodstream and it's hence the um, some of the health effects that we've seen. Now, um, whoops, uh, so we've got this 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 uh, opioid going into the blood um, now it's particularly from what I've read is if you have a leaky gut um, and leaky gut, if you've got, um, so the leaky gut, the gut spur is, is responsible for the absorption of some macromolecules and a healthy gut should be very good at controlling which macromolecules do get through um, into the bloodstream. But with a leaky gut, which is could be a result of a whole lot of different things here, you can read in Wikipedia, but um, basically young babies have a... a more transmissive gut, so they could be more susceptible, if, or if you've had an infection, um, or other types of disruption, could cause some inflammation, inflammation, causing some increased transmission of these types of macromolecules, allowing this BCM7 to get through. Um, now, so the different different cows basically have got these different proportions of these beta B1, so A1 and A2 beta casein. So turns out that um, different cows, and this is a percent proportions of the different proteins, um, the Guernsey cow, the older cows, which look like this guy, um, actually have the old original pre-mutated form of the A2 beta casein, um, whereas the Holstein cows, which is the more traditional, the way I imagine cows, being milked with the ones we have in Australia is actually a new variant. These are, have the A1 beta casein in quite a uh, high proportion. Um, 
So you can see here on this chart, I'll include these links into the, in the um, description. Um, but the Guernsey looks like the good guy here with the most um, A2 beta casein. Um, now, I should say that in some of the studies that I've read, they all talk about strong correlations, um, but they all uh, sort of say that more trials need to be done. Um, they all end, you can see further animal research and clinical trials would need to, be, uh, need to compare disease risk factors of A1 free versus ordinary milk. Um, and this is sort of a common theme that there is a correlation. Um, other things I've read, particularly um, if you have if you have a healthy gut, the amount of the specium 7 getting through will be definitely reduced. So the effects might not be there, but if you've got high transmission, um, that could be quite bad. Um, other things I've read here, uh, this is a, a bit of an older study, um, Australian New Zealand study, and saying that there has been no evidence established between A1 and A2 milk and diabetes, coronary heart disease or other diseases. Um, so definitely more research has to be done, but the preliminary there is some sort of correlation between um, a2, A1, sorry, being a bit of a bad mutated form of the protein that's probably been in introduced during a breeding process through the, um, the, the getting the cows genetically suited for mass milking. Um, it could have even been thousands of years ago. Um, yeah, but quite interesting. Um, if there's any problems with information I provided, please post your comment. Um, and yeah, I think it's been pretty interesting, so thanks.